Hello everyone, today we will discuss vectors. So, what is a vector? A vector is a directed segment which has two main characteristics. The first one is a length of vector and the second one is its direction. So, vectors are often written as a b vector or just a vector with their coordinates written in column x and y. So what does it mean? X coordinate show us the movement across the X axis. If it's positive, we will move right, and if it's negative, we will move left. And Y coordinate show us the movement across the Y axis. Again, if it's positive, we will move upwards, and if it's negative, we will move downwards. So uh, this form of vectors is called a component form of vector. So, for example, let's say I have a vector A with coordinates 3 and 4. If I try to show it on the xy plane, I will need to consider some facts about vectors. So, the first fact is we need to keep in mind that any vector has a starting point at the origin. And these points are the coordinates of my endpoint. So, as we mentioned before, the x coordinates show us the movement across the x axis. So, we will move three units to the right and four units up. So, let me show you. We will move right three units and four units up. So, the vector shows us the least distance between the origin and my end point. So, let's say it's O and it's A. This vector is OA. So that's the basics of vectors. That's what vectors show us. So the other ta the another task uh, that often is shown in the Cambridge and higher level books is finding the length, absolute value, or magnitude of vectors. So length, magnitude, and absolute value of vector is found using the same formula. Square root of x squared plus y squared. How do we prove that? For example, we will use this example. So the distance from 0 to 3 is 3 units, and distance from 0 to 4 is 4 units. I have a right triangle with legs 3 and 4. And to find the length of the hypotenuse, which is my vector OA, I will need to use the Pythagoras theorem, and my hypotenuse, OA, will be equal to square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is square root of 25, and it's equal to 5. So the length of segment OA, which is my vector OA, is equal to 5 units. So let's talk about vector equality. Vectors are equal if their direction and length are equal. So, in other words, we can say that two vectors are equal if they are a parallel translation of each other. But often we see two vectors with the same, uh, same distance, I mean same length, and opposite directions. In this case, for example, I have A and B here, A and B here. This vector is vector AB, and this vector is vector BA. We always write vectors from the starting point to the end point. BA vector is equal to negative AB. We write it down like this. These vectors are called negative vectors. Another type of vector is called zero vector. Zero vector is a vector which has no direction, is the only vector which has no direction, and the length of this vector is always zero. We don't use it that much, but again, <clears throat> you should know about it. So, um, what about adding, subtracting vectors? So, for example, I have vector A with coordinates x and y, and vector B with coordinates, for example, this coordinate would be x and y, and x1 and y1, and this one will be x2 and y2. 
um, it will be convenient for us. So if I need to find the vector of sum of these two vectors, I will just sum up x and y coordinates respectively. Let me show you, for example, I have vector a with coordinates 4 and 2 and vector b with coordinates 3 and 5. So if I need to find the sum of these two vectors, I will just sum up their x and y coordinates respectively. So 4 plus 3 and 2 plus 5 will give me a total answer of 7 and 7. So this is regarding the sum, summing up two vectors. But what if we need to find the difference of two vectors? Difference of two vectors is found by subtracting each coordinate from the corresponding one in the other vector. Again, x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2. For example, I have vectors a with coordinate 4 and 6 and vector b with coordinate 3 and 2. So vector a minus b, vector difference, will have the coordinates 4 minus 3 and 6 minus 2 respectively. So 1 and 4. That is our answer. So this is what is regarding this adding and subtracting vectors. Sometimes we need to find the multiplication of vector by some number k. This is called a multiplication of vector by a scalar. A scalar is a number k. For example, I have a vector a with coordinates x and y, and I have some number k, which is multiplied by this vector. So k times vector a. In this case, I will have new coordinates, and k will be multiplied by each coordinate inside my vector, kx and ky respectively. So, for example, vector A was with coordinates 5 and 10, and I have to find 3A. 3A will be the vector with coordinates 3 times 5 and 3 times 10. So, 15 and 30 respectively. That is what we do when we have a scalar multiplication, I mean, multiplying vector by a scalar. Uh, the other case is when we multiply two vectors by each other, each containing its own coordinates, x1, y1 here, and x2, y2 here. If we multiply these two vectors, the final answer will be x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2. This is called the scalar multiplication of two vectors. So for example, 3 and 4 here is multiplied by 4 and 6 here. I will have 3 times 4 plus 4 times 6. 12 plus 24, the final answer is 36. This is a scalar multiplication of vectors. So, um, let's talk about parallel and perpendicular vectors. Parallel vectors are vectors such that for example, we have vector A and vector B. They are called parallel only if vector B, for example, is a scalar multiple of vector A. So A and B are in such ratio that B is K times K. For example, I have vector A, which is 3 and 6, and vector B, which is 6 and 12. As I can tell, vector B is obtained after multiplying vector A by 2. That means they're parallel, just vector b will be with this coordinates, these coordinates. So what about perpendicular vectors? The condition for two vectors to be perpendicular is that their scalar product must be equal to 0. As we mentioned before, the scalar product is x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2. If their scalar product is zero, these vectors are perpendicular. Uh, why do we use vectors in geometry? In geometry, the vectors are used to establish relationships between geometric shapes. Uh, for example, I have vector A and I have vector B, and I'm being asked about finding the sum of these two vectors. 
In these cases, we use the so-called triangle law of vectors. So what is it about? We need to take the vector B and place it such that the end of vector A and start of vector B, they line in one point. Then I almost get a triangle. I just need to build it up from start of A. And this vector is the vector of sum of A and B. This is called triangle law. The other law we use is called a parallelogram law. Again, we have two vectors, A and B, sorry, vector B. And again, we need to find the sum of these two vectors. You can use either triangle law or parallelogram law. So the parallelogram law is about placing the vector B such that the start of point of vector A and start of vector B lies in the same point. Then the next thing we need to do is build up a parallelogram in these two points. And the diagonal of this parallelogram will be the vector of sum of these two vectors. So this will be S, which is A plus B. This is called parallelogram law. So, for example, I have this geometric shape. And I need to find, for example, this here is A, B, C, and D. So this one is vector A, B, this one is B, C, this one is C, D, and this one is A, D, A. So, if I need to find, for example, vector AC, this is the vector starting from here and ending here. So its direction will be from A to C. As we can see, we have a triangle low here. For example, this one is A, this one is B, this one is C, and this one is B. So my vector X, which is equal to AC, will be a plus B, since we use the triangle law. That's the thing we use in geometry containing vectors. These subjects are very important, so please take a look. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.